my topic of presentation is resection reconstruction arthroplasty of distal radius gct giant cell tumor is a benign but locally aggressive tumor and always there is a chance of local recurrence malignant transformation and also potential for metastasis usually it is seen at the end of the long bones after skeletal maturity and the usual location is metaphyseo epiphysis but occasionally it is limited to the metaphysis giant cell tumor accounts for approximately 5% of all bone tumors and the most common location is distal femur then comes proximal tibia and distal radius is the third commonest site usually it affects 20 to 40 years of age group and females are more commonly affected various treatment options are available in the literature and these include extended curettage with or without reconstruction using autogenic or allogenic bone graft or bone cement resection and reconstruction with vascularized or non vascularized proximal fibula that is fibular head arthroplasty next is resection with partial wrist arthrodesis and then comes the resection with complete wrist arthrodesis Curettage and bone grafting can preserve the joint functions, but it has been associated with high local recurrence rate, about 27 to 54 percent. Curettage and bone cement has recurrence rate low, but it is 8 percent to 15 percent. Walther was the first to describe the use of free non-vascular proximal fibular graft to replace the resected distal radius, and most of the authors have reported various success rate with this procedure. now the problem with the gct is it remains difficult and challenging management problem because there are no absolute clinical radiological or histological parameters that can accurately predict the tendency of any single lesion to recur or metastasize Re reconstruction of the risk after excision is a challenge because high functional demand of the hand and the patient age is younger limited surrounding soft tissue and the proximity of the adjacent nerve and tendon so pre operative assessment should be very careful about history and examination site and size of the tumor including relationship with the surrounding structure and routine stage test x rays ct scan and mri if indicated serum calcium phosphorus alkaline phosphatase to rule out the hyperparathyroidism fnac and tissue biopsy radiologically it can be graded according to the campanese grade 1 is well defined border of a thin rim of mature bone and bony cortex was intact in grade 2 lesion had relatively well defined margin but there was no radio opaque cortical rim and in grade 3 lesion with fuzzy borders suggest a rapid and possibly a pre permeative growth of the tumor so goals of the treatment is ideal treatment goal is to eradicate the tumor and preserve the joint function so goal is to achieve complete removal of the tumor decrease the risk of local recurrence and to preserve as much wrist function as possible so you can go with volar or dorsal approach depending upon the extension of the tumor lesion but one should be careful to leave one inch of normal distal radius was excised along with the tumor with safe margin in all cases and preserve the neurovascular bundle and tendons reconstruction of the bony defect was done using ipsilateral proximal fibular graft fibular graft size should be 8 mm more than then actual required was taken to prevent carpo fibular subluxation the articular surface of the head of the fibula was placed over the scapula lunate articular surface and fixed to the carpals with k wires the excise end of the radius and the transplant were fixed with a small dcp and another k wire was fixed transversely to stabilize the new created fibula ulnar joint the limb was immobilized in a long arm cast for 12 weeks and these are cases the first case is 28 years male with history of pain and progressive swelling in left forearm these are the pre operative x ray this is 3d ct scan 
these are showing that the lesion has broken the cortex these are ct scans the excised tumor mass approximate the length and these are intra op fixation this is the graft harvest site immediate post op and this is one year post op follow up this is the functional range of motion of the wrist this is another case 17 year old female with history of pain and swelling this is excised tumor intra op post op these are follow up and there is a gap at the radio fibular site so it will go into the non union so the take home message is removal of the distal end of radius will jeopardize function of the forearm compromise range of motion of wrist and cause instability of the wrist unless a reconstruction be undertaken to restore anatomy the clinical behavior of gct is unrelated to histological or radiological grading and thus the decision to either salvage or excise the tumor bone is based on the achieve stability and function most author agree that the completeness of the curettage and excision is the single most important factor to prevent recurrence several studies support proximal fibular replacement after distal radius ex excision it has got low donor side morbidity predictable and satisfactory functional results are there and relatively free of major complications the more localized lesion are best treated with curettage but extensive cortical destruction and large soft tissue component usually need a in block dissection and the careful clinical and radiological assessment of the distal radius gct and judicious treatment plan is the key for successful outcome of this lesion thank you sir mm -hmm.